Hi everyone, um, my name is Shannon. You may or may not already know me. I currently am one of the bloggers for bigbrothergroup.com. Um, Joe, who is one of the admins on that site, I started blogging for him back in season 14 of Big Brother US and continued on for season 15 and season 16, as well as Big Brother Canada seasons 1 and season 2. Um, I am Canadian, so that's kind of why I'm one of the main bloggers for Big Brother Canada, since most of the people that are on there are American. Um, this year, I just decided to do something a little different and decided to do video blogs rather than written ones, which I felt was a bit more interactive and so you can kind of know me a bit more too and not just read my words on the screen. Um, so basically right now I'm just doing my first impressions of the 16 house guests for this upcoming season of Big Brother Canada. Um, I'm basically just going to go through them in the order that they are on the website. And if you want to follow along with me, it's Big Brother Canada. You can type in bigbrothercanada.ca and it'll direct you to the global TV website and you just click on view the house guests and go from there. I'll also have a link below that'll take you right to the page that I'm looking at if you would like to use it to follow along or look at it yourself to read their bio as well as look at their brief interview videos, which is basically all that I am using to base my opinions on right now. I have refrained from watching any other videos about it so that these opinions are entirely my own and not really influenced by other people. So yeah, without further ado, I'll get to this and get this up before the premiere starts. If you hear any noise in the background, I apologize. Um, my boyfriend and I have a pet rabbit back there and sometimes, you know, he's a rabbit, what are you going to do? And a couple of roommates downstairs. so really control <laughs> how loud they are so I apologize if any of that disrupts anybody but I will just get right to it okay so first off there is Bruno and I keep looking this way because I have a second monitor over here to view the house guests and my notes that I have on them so what I think of Bruno basically uh his little description here uh, he's a construction worker and Ottawa's first ever house guest, house guest competing and Ottawa's first ever house guest competing for his wife and two sons so right off the bat um, he's very family oriented which I can appreciate and respect completely coming personally from a family with a really great dad I can appreciate another you know great dad stepping up and wanting to do the best he can for his family that is very admirable and respectful and I appreciate it a ton um, so yeah I like that he has kind of the the basic sort of wanting to have like an idea of how he wants to play but first wanting to see who he's playing with before he decides on a set strategy and I can really appreciate that because I think it's really important for people to know who they're playing with before they can really say like oh I'm going to play this way I'm going to play that way whatever because you don't part of the game is the social aspect and strategy and stuff and you can't really make strategy or you know, predict how social you're going to be until you know the other 15 people that you're going to be living with. So for this reason, I, you know, totally respect that. And I think that he, as long as he has a fairly decent concept of the game and kind of what has gotten other people far, I think that he has a pretty good shot of getting where he needs to go and doing what he can to make his family proud. So I really like Bruno so far. Next we have Brittany and her description here is vivacious and curvaceous. The Calgary native currently works in New York as a plus size model. And I love that she, you know, made a career and embraces, you know, her curves and that is amazing and totally respectful. And I just want to throw that out there. Um, and before I really get in depth more about this, um, basically my commentary and opinions 
for this whole thing aren't meant to attack anyone personally so if you're a friend or family member or just you know a really big fan of somebody on the show I don't want you to feel like I'm personally attacking them because that's not my intention I'm just basically predicting kind of how I feel like they're gonna play the game and sort of how they are as a character on the show versus anything else it's not meant to be how I think of them in real life because I'm sure everyone is a great person in real life and has great characteristics which is why they were cast on the show in the first place because casting saw something in them so I'm not gonna you know insult them for anything personal that's not my style at all I'm just saying how I think that they'll be on TV with other people how they might interact with them and kind of how they're being perceived as people on TV and it's not meant to attack them as real life people or whatnot because I I can understand how being in an environment like Big Brother without your family, without your support system and stuff can kind of make you a bit different than how you'd be in real life. So just putting that out there before I get into this because mostly because there are going to be a few people I don't like and Brittany is kind of one of those people that I'm just not a big fan of at the moment to put it lightly. Um, the one thing that I did like about her was that I thought it was really funny in her video. She talks about her love of hot sauce and that she puts that shit on everything. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. And, you know, um, I just feel like she might cause some drama and kind of get a bit overwhelmed with Big Brother because I don't really think that she has a good feel for what she's getting into or really kind of knows everything that it's about. I mean, being from New like living in New York obviously helps with being around a lot of people and a lot of different types of people, but Big Brother is close quarters. You can't really escape from those people and it's really different. So while she may be prepared a bit for different kinds of people, I don't think she's really gonna be prepared for the, the sort of drama and the sort of like living with these people 24 seven and kind of that aspect of it all. So, um, but if she has her hot sauce, she might just do okay. So next we have Bobby. Again, not one of my particular favorites. Uh, this adventure seeking rock climbing instructor from Oakville lives at home working for the family business. So Bobby, let's see. I, I watched his video and everything and I, just kept feeling like I don't like this person but I couldn't really figure out exactly why that was which kind of bothered me <laughs> because generally I like to have reasons why I like or don't like somebody but I sort of felt stuck because I couldn't figure out why I just knew that I didn't at this point it was just kind of you know really like just meet those people and they sort of just rub you the wrong way that's kind of the vibe that I felt with him like he was almost trying too hard to be how he thinks a character or a person on Big Brother should be rather than just being himself. So that was a little bit frustrating. But beyond that, I did think he was okay. Again, just not one of my favorites. Okay, so next we have Sarah. And I wanted to love Sarah. Really wanted to adore her. Wanted to love her because... I read some of her bio and I was reading about her and I just, just upon looking at her I was hoping she'd be a sort of unique kind of a Nick character or like Tala to reference season two and season one of Big Brother Canada so it's kind of hoping she'd fill that more unique cute kind of role and I, I know I'm probably in the minority for this because I read a lot of comments online of people that really like her but I just don't and I think it's just because I don't relate to her or relate to her way of life. Her description is a free-spirited hemp, hemp employee from Toronto and self-proclaimed grown-up version of Lisa Simpson. I just say that's not really a part of my life or sort of people that I hang out with. So for me, it's just I'm, I can't relate to her. And that's kind of why I don't like her I mean she might be really great at this game so my opinion can for sure definitely change it's just as of right now I personally can't find something to relate to with her so that's kind of why I don't really really like her and she's a little just too weird and not in the like quirky way that I would normally really like and adore 
and I, I'm not trying to like sound mean or anything. It's just something that just doesn't mesh with me personally. Okay, so next we have Zach. Um, Zach is an ambitious pre-med student and quarterback for the University of Virginia's football team. I think it is about time that we have someone represented from Saskatchewan because I feel like a lot of like the Saskatchewan, Manitoba sort of area of Canada has been ignored in this process. So it's kind of cool to see someone from that area, at least right off the bat, that's like, okay, that's cool. Okay, so so Zach is 22, and apparently his mother still does his laundry for him. In this video, I was like, wait, what? I get that you're a student and, you know, probably living at home or close to home, and that saves you money and everything. I am one of those people that totally understands how expensive university is and all that that goes along with it but you're 22 years old you're in school to you know eventually find a career a job a profession you're an adult and you don't do your own laundry um no like just just I've been doing my laundry since I was 12 so to me that's just ridiculous but I hope that he doesn't expect someone in the house to do it for him. Hopefully, you know, if he didn't learn before going on the show, someone can quickly kind of teach him because, I mean, that would get really annoying if every week you're going to do your laundry and someone else is like, hey, you want to clean my clothes? Like, no. 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 So, for his benefit, I hope that he does. But all my kidding and poking fun aside, um... He really just seemed like a really genuine guy, and I did like that and appreciate that about him. And I think he has a pretty good solid base for what he would like to do in the game and kind of where he wants to go with it. I just hope that he's able to not rub people the wrong way and not, and hopefully, you know, figure out how to do little things like laundry and whatnot so that he's not expecting anybody else to take care of him because your mom's not in the Big Brother house with you as much as you might want her to be she's not so hopefully he can take care of that okay so next we have willow now willow is a nova scotian born tomboy recently moved to calgary for work fun and plenty of adventure um i basically just I love that she's a huge fan of Big Brother and has been watching it for so long. I can always definitely appreciate a fellow super fan that has been watching as long as I have. Um, so she's really interesting. I'm not sure whether I like her or whether I don't like her at this point. I kind of just need to see more of her before I can decide. However, I do think it would have been really cool if we could have had her and Arlie from season two be on the same season just because they're such big super fans and... I feel like it would have been kind of cool to see them strategize together and kind of work together. I think that would have been a really cool dynamic. So I'm kind of sad that, uh, you know, he didn't apply that this season instead of last season or that, you know, she, if whatever reason she wasn't put on last season, if she did apply or if she just hadn't applied for last season, I kind of wish that those two were on together because I think it would have been really cool. That's just my random side note of like, I could just see them working together. Um, next, oh, <laughs> next we have Cindy with an S, and it's very important to her that you spell her name with an S, not with a C, which at first go I found really annoying, but then thinking about it, it's like, okay, I get you, because that would be really frustrating. I mean, to just have somebody constantly spell your name wrong, whatever, but it has to be something that you're used to, because when you have such a common first name people are gonna spell it wrong you have to expect that and I hope that if for whatever reason this comes up or someone spells her name wrong or something that she doesn't lose her shit 
on them because she's actually pretty cute and pretty lovable aside from that. So I feel like she would do really well and get pretty far just based on personality and getting along with people alone as long as, you know, she's not rubbing them the wrong way just because she's annoyed with them spelling her name wrong. Like, it's such a minor thing in the grand scheme of winning a hundred grand. I feel like that's something you should just get over. So next, <laughs> next we have Pilar. This sassy Mexican-born beauty grew up with ten siblings and knows how to fight for herself. <sighs> this one. I am a big fan of people that are just weird and awkward. So when she's in that interview and she's like trying to be all serious and keeps giggling and laughing at everything, I was like, yes. I, I love her. I do. She's definitely one of my top three girls that I like in the house so far from my first impressions. Um, I just like that she's just the awkward and I feel like I would be the same way if I ever you know got chosen for Big Brother and they're asking me all these questions and it's my first time like in front of one of those cameras I'd be like trying to act all serious and then just keep laughing because that's just my silly kind of quirky side so seeing someone that I feel like would be similar to me is really cool so I'm really rooting for her I hope that I hope that she can fit in with everybody else well and make a solid alliance and if she can then I think she can go far I think she has a pretty good idea of this game, at least I hope, at least personality-wise. I think she's adorable, so hopefully she won't be, you know, overlooked and kind of booted out early just because of uh, that kind of awkward personality. But I really like her, and I hope that she does well. So next we have Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Johnny is a boy, crazy, attention-loving, 26-year-old superfan from Winnipeg with a dog named Vito. Yes, Vito, after the power of Vito. <laughs> That's a pretty intense fan there, which I definitely appreciate. I don't, I never named any of my pets after anything Big Brother related, so props to him. Um, I find him absolutely hysterical. Just watching his videos, I was laughing. My boyfriend was like playing video games and I had you know my laptop on my lap yesterday watching all these videos and and I'm just sitting there laughing he's looking at me like what is wrong with you what are you doing and I just could not you know stop laughing from this guy's thing not because I was laughing at him or anything like nothing bad just because he was so entertaining um I so look forward to seeing how he is on tv and Especially his dagging room sessions. I think they're going to be absolutely hysterical. At least I hope so. And also, um, I like that he's a fan of Netta. Anyone that knows me and kind of follows my blogs knows that in Brick Brother Canada 2, my favorite all-time top player was Netta. And for season one was Peter. So, those are sort of my two favorites. So anyone that kind of likes them sort of immediately gets a special little respect kind of in my book, but but yeah, um so I do like him. I hope he does well. I hope that his big personality doesn't get him into trouble because I know that that can happen sometimes, but sometimes it gets you to the end like last season with Sabrina she had a really big personality but she was brought to the end mostly because she wasn't very well liked by her house kids but you know it got her to the end and second place is still you know something but but I feel like he can do really well and if he got to the end he could he's very well spoken I feel like he could take it so next we have Kevin and I liked Kevin I liked Kevin a lot and then and then he had his comment about hooking up with a girl and having a showman's and that being just for fun which I'm fine with as long as both parties know that it's for fun I understand that Big Brother is a game of scheming manipulation lies backstab etc etc but when it comes to matters of the heart 
it kind of hits me home. I don't think that you should mess with someone's feelings like that. I think that that's just rude and heartless. And the fact that he was kind of hinting at that and saying that girls that are his age or, you know, like that, it really struck a nerve with me and made me just not really care for him. I like that he appreciated the beautifulness that is Rochelle from last season. But I hope that she stays away from him, at least if he continues to have this sort of attitude, because it's just, I found it very not cool. Okay, so next up we have Neha. Neha. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I apologize. I'm just trying to remember this from yesterday. Basically, uh, she's a spunky chiropractor and entrepreneur from Toronto whose social game is her best and worst asset. Um, my first impression of her was that she was very unapproachable. I was not a big fan of hers, even though she says that she's a person that people go to for advice and things. I personally would not find myself wanting to be like, yeah, I'm going to confide in you. No, just, just no. Um, personally, I think I was a bit distracted just by... The false eyelashes situation that she had and what she was wearing. I'm all for wearing makeup and making yourself feel pretty and everything and even wearing them from time to time. But when you can blatantly tell that you're wearing them and like they're just thick and chunky and make your eyes look super small, that's when I'm like, okay, no. And she just, between that and just kind of her sort of attitude, I, I don't find her to be very approachable and likable. Um, there are probably a ton of you that disagree with me, and that's okay. Or any opinion can possibly change. It was just none of my first impression from that video was that I, she just didn't give me that sort of friendly, open vibe that I would expect from someone that, you know, people would go to and want to open up to. So she's definitely just not one of my favorites for right now. So next we have Greg. And he's a formal Major League Baseball player and currently a scout for the league, as well as an avid yogi from Pitt Meadows, BC. Um, he basically seemed like a pretty chill, normal guy. Um, he wants to lie about his career, which, I mean, I get, but I don't really think it's something that anyone really needs to do and that it's really necessary. I'd hope that any real, true Big Brother fan wouldn't base their decision on who wins the money, whether voting for them to not win it just because they have money or voting for them to win it just because they need it. I feel like it should be voted based just on gameplay, and if it happens to be someone that deserves it and needs the money, that's great. And if it happens to be someone that already has money, that's great too, because then I feel like the most deserving player of the game should win. It shouldn't matter their occupation, their age, the school they go to, whatever. None of that should come into play at all when choosing your winner. Other people may disagree with that, but that's just kind of my stance on it, and I would hope that most people would have that sort of opinion too. So, um, but in general, he seemed like a cool person, cool kind of dude, and... But that strategy I'm not really liking. Maybe he'll change it once he actually gets in the house. I know it's kind of an on-the-spot interview. What are you planning on doing? And it's good to have some sort of idea, but once you kind of feel like your house guests kind of see who they are, how they act and stuff, I think you can get a better feel for whether he thinks that he should keep that from them or not. So next we have Ashley. And Ashley is a Calgarian sweetheart from a family of seven siblings who knows how to hold her own in big groups. Now, Ashley was my favorite girl from the whole bunch. Um, I like her personality, mostly, from what I saw. And um, I really just, my main kind of thing that I gathered from her little two and a half minute video was that uh, she separates sort of the personal aspect from the game aspect of everything which I think is really important because a lot of times people take you know a lot of Big Brother way too seriously and 
you know, bring that things as personal attacks, getting voted for, getting evicted and whatever. Meanwhile, it's, it's a lot of times meant as a compliment because they see you as a threat in the game, whether that's a competition threat or a strategic threat or something. So I think it's important and great that she, you know, has a good kind of sense of game versus personal when it comes to a lot of this. And most things are, you know, intended as game and you're not supposed to take any of it personally. I know it's hard because there's so much money on the line and everything, but but I like that she's able to do that. So uh, she is my favorite girl so far that I've seen. From what I've seen so far, anyways. Um, okay, next we have Godfrey. And he is a Zimbabwe-born psychology major from Toronto who won't stop anything to win the 100 grand. Um, he kind of gets similar sort of notes that I had for, for Greg. Basically, um, I just, <laughs> I think he seemed like a cool dude when I saw him. Um, the only thing that I was kind of <laughs> about, again, just the wanting to lie about being a psychology major, I get why people would see that as a threat. I also am a social science major, or I guess degree. I keep saying major even though I've graduated and have my degree. <laughs> and it's in sociology with a minor in psychology and minor in information technology. But, um, so yeah, I get why, you know, being a major in social sciences might give you an advantage just because it, you're a little bit more educated on you know, how people interact with each other, how people think, how people are perceived and all that. But at the end of the day, if you can't, you can be educated and all that and whatever, but if you can't, you can talk the talk, but if you can't kind of walk the walk and get along with those people and use that knowledge to your advantage, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. So, I mean, it's up to him, obviously, if he, you know, reveals that to everybody or not, but I personally am just not a big fan about lying about those things. I don't really see the point in it. But if it helps him out in the end, and if people, you know, would actually judge for that, then then I guess, you know, by all means, go be thy. But I personally just think it's a little silly. Okay, so next we have Jordan. And I think Jordan was my favorite guy. He's the small but mighty conservative from Surrey, isn't shy in sharing his feelings and opinions on anything. Um, basically, <laughs> he kind of became my favorite guy just because he likes Netta and Peter, which, as I mentioned earlier, are my two favorites. So, I liked him <laughs> right before I even watched his video just from reading his bio. Um, I can also appreciate that he knows his own strengths and his own weaknesses. And the fact that someone can recognize their own weaknesses in this game is very important because once you at least know your weaknesses, you're able to adapt and change and kind of work with those weaknesses and make sure that it doesn't get in the way as much as it would in, say, your normal life. It's a lot easier to control and to fix a weakness when you're open to admit it. And he is willing to do that. And I think that is so important and so great of him to acknowledge that. So I have pretty high hopes for him just from reading that off the bat that he, you know, knows the things that he's weak at and he's going to try and find, you know, alliances and people that can kind of help in those areas, which is just a really great sort of idea and strategy going in. And last but not least, we have Risha. Risha, Risha, sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, she is a 41-year-old, six-foot-one sensitive statuesque beauty from Toronto. Well, I agree. She's tall. She's beautiful. However, one note, just big brother stuff aside, that I noticed in her little interview video. She's wearing this cute little pink tank top. However, not wearing a bra when you're on camera. For a public, TV, internet, web, not really the best idea. Not that I ever think it's a good idea ever. That's just me. Just kind of, you know, keep the girls in and not poking out, to put it lightly. Um, so that kind of made things a little uncomfortable for me. 
I get it. You're pretty at age 41, but, and that's amazing. I didn't believe she was 41 until I read it, but, you know, you're old enough. You're a grown woman. You know how to keep them in place, so just keep them in place and not poke it out. That's all I'll ask. Just one little favor. Okay, so, however, her personality does seem really cool. And I liked that she's very sarcastic and that she can appreciate other people that are sarcastic since I am the same way. Um, that's basically my sense of humor. So anyone that kind of can get that and go back and forth with me, uh, I generally instantly kind of get along with. So I do like her. I hope that her maturity doesn't get in her way. Like I've seen it sort of happen in the past with a few older house guests. Sometimes they don't really get along with the younger ones and that can be a little bit detrimental to them or they try and play the sympathy card too much and no one really wants that so just you know if she can kind of get along with everybody and you know play up her sarcastic fun side I'm sure she'll be okay I'd get along with her if that were the case myself so that's the only kind of thing I have to say really about her um but yeah it seemed like a great cast this year um I'm looking forward to the premiere tomorrow night so, yeah, um, basically I'm going to be doing this, like I said, every week, at least once a week, possibly more later. It all depends. Um, so you can subscribe to my, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. And um, you can also follow me on Twitter. It's, my Twitter handle is at sbauer17. So that's at S-B-A-U-E-R, and then the number one and the number seven. And I will be live tweeting there when I can during episodes. Um, if not, that'll be, I can post on there when I upload a video, so you'll know. As well as, uh, I believe Big Brother Group will be posting a link on their blog as well. So if you follow their blog, we'll see it on there too. So I hope to see you all on the next live eviction day, which will be when my next video is up. So have a good night, everybody.